excited than we are about the garage sale. So let's hear from Lorna first. <laughs> We couldn't have held this garage sale without quite a few people. I just want to say general thank yous to the volunteers, the pricers, the sellers, the greeters, the youth, the people who set up, the cleaning up people, people who donated items, donations, the pickup person who went and picked up all the donations. You know who you are, Tom Kerr, and I know you told me not to say your name. <laughs> Way to go, Linda. <laughs> um, the muffin makers, the plant growers, the snack seller, and the plant sellers. The kitchen made approximately $200. Plants made over $500. Online sales before the uh, garage sale, was, we reached $2,000. So, I'm not going to tell you the total yet. All right. <laughs> we still have more money to come in for various items that we haven't sold yet. And there's a few things I put aside that I'm going to put on closer to Christmas because I think we'd be able to sell those for more than we would have gotten yesterday, later in the day. Uh, pick up tomorrow, Cerebral Palsy is coming to pick up uh, what we didn't sell. And we've, I pu uh, we put aside quite a few lovely things for a group. They emailed me when they saw our ad on um, Facebook asking if we'd be interested in donating to supportive housing. So we probably have four boxes of very good things to give them as well. They'll be coming tomorrow. And with ecstatic, I'm ecstatic to announce that at the moment, we have raised $6,117. And, and nobody thanked Lorna, who I know you all know. I also know she had a lot of fun doing it. Work, but fun. So I have thank yous as well this morning. Thanks to the Spirit Sisters planning team. Thanks again to our media team who, of course, this week had to really think outside the box because the service isn't just that format that we're so used to. So kudos to them for making that work. The contributors who you will see on the, on the screen at some point through the, the service, and our main contributor, Florence Niven, whose poetry and words just make us think, and we're so grateful for all that she does with her words. This year, as we have listened, we have also supported three charities suggested by our speakers. Their contact information is in uh, tidings, but we encourage you to make a special donation to Dawn House or Canadians for Women in Afghanistan or the Kingston Indigenous Language, Language Nest. This would show your commitment to our causes and we hope that you will find yourselves able to do that. The last announcement is that we have been intentional about not serving coffee this morning because COVID has hit many of our spirit sisters. That doesn't mean you can't stand outside with your mask on out in the narthex and chat with us because we'll all be there ready with, with smiles under our mask to chat. A few announcements about life within this church. A celebration of life for Eric Van Dalen will be held in the sanctuary and on Zoom next Saturday, May 21st, with a reception to follow in the lower hall. A celebration for the life of Gil Ryan will be held on June 4th, and a reception will be following. And a reception for Gord Nickel for the celebration of his life will be held on June the 11th. We know these are, are sad things, but also lives to be celebrated, and we hope that you will be able to participate in that way. Today, I also want to wish Grant Down, father of our minister, Michelle, a happy 80th birthday. So I'm sure Michelle will watch this at some point. So let's say thank, a happy birthday to Grant. This is the life and work of Edith Rankin Memorial United Church. On Sunday, we gather for worship. Let us worship God. Welcome to this sacred space. We acknowledge that this space we call sacred is on the lands of the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. 
They have always held these lands and all lands sacred. As spirit sisters, we have been humbled to listen this year to life experiences shared and we journey with open hearts and minds to a better understanding. You bless us with your presence here today. As we enter this time together, we invite you to listen to these words from Proverbs, Proverbs 2, verses 2 to 5. My child, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, if you look for it as silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and the final knowledge of God. This morning I am honored to light a memorial candle for three people important to us in the life of this congregation. The first is for Alma Lank, mother of Charlotte Jones, who passed away this weekend. Um, a life well lived and to be celebrated for sure. You may not know uh, Barb Armstrong Rodrigue. She is uh, a quiet person amongst our Spirit Sisters friends, but her mother-in-law, Catherine K. Rodrigue, died yesterday, and we would like to honor that life as well. Dr. Brent Mills died on Friday, the son of Spirit Sister Dorothy Mills. Lives to be celebrated, lives to remember. I light this little memorial candle that is in the shape of a heart for those people we hold close in our hearts. I also light the worship candle this morning. We light this candle for peace, for peace that surpasses all understanding. May the light from this candle illuminate every corner within this sacred space and beyond this sacred space. May peace inform every thought, every conversation, and every action until all God's people within this sacred space and beyond this sacred space can come together as one. Amen.
Listen. They're in the silence, scattered throughout the music. Moments of grace. Signaling a dynamic shift, a change in tempo. They're in the ocean's sighs after it sends its waves crashing against the shore. And in the hush that follows a summer storm, when prayers deferred and words unspoken are finally released, hesitantly, humbly, they're in the calm before the blessing. Listen, when passion and purpose are reclaimed and the everyday becomes sacred. Listen, be still, know. They're moments of grace, whispers, of the divine. Listen. only the necessities. There's no room for precious sentimentality, family heirlooms, seaside treasures. Take only those items you can carry to destinations unknown. Unimaginable. Move quickly. Leave. Leave your books, your photos, your artwork. But take. Take. Your story, your history, your truth. You have to leave. Gather your hopes, gather your dreams, gather your courage. Take them with you, don't abandon them. Find room for them. Make room for them. Then leave. leave.
What if you were told you had to leave quickly, that it's not safe for you to stay? You're an abused woman, you're trans or gender fluid or non-binary. Your country is under attack. You've lost your job. You've lost your home. You've lost your land. You have to leave. What would you take? What would you be willing to leave behind? In the midst of unimaginable heartache and loss, after the first bodies of innocent indigenous children were found, the First Nations peoples asked us to listen. Listen, a, seeming, a seemingly simple request, yet a request that was denied for generations. It was because of this request that Spirit Sisters chose listen as this year's theme, and that is what we have been doing. We've listened to storytellers within and beyond our circle who conveyed to us the importance of sharing story. We've listened to stories of the women living at our local women's shelter, Dawn House. We've learned that increasingly the women who find themselves homeless are over the age of 70. Women who had to pack quickly then leave. If this was your story, what would you take? We've listened to stories of the women in Afghanistan who've been forced to back into the shadows of society under the present regime. Those able to escape had to pack quickly and leave under the cloak of darkness. If this was your story, what would you take? We've listened to the stories of the missing Indigenous children and the missing and murdered Indigenous women. Stories too easily pushed from the headlines, too often ignored. Stories of friends and family left behind with so many unanswered questions. If this was your story, what would you be willing to leave behind? It's very easy to feel overwhelmed. Walk away from all that we see, all that we feel. And yet, as the people of God, we are compelled to stand firmly on this holy ground. Listen to the stories with intention and compassion. Support the truth tellers. Be still. No, then put your faith into action because that is who we are and that is what we do. But first, we must listen. Please join us in the centering pit prayer. When you hear our words, you are welcome here, Please respond with, we see you, we hear you, we are listening. We unpack the cloth of courage and light a candle for the displaced, the disenfranchised, the marginalized, all who are forced to wander for one reason or another. You are welcome here. We, we see, see you, you. We, we hear, hear you. you. We're listening. We're listening. We unpack the cloth of authenticity and light a candle for those who've had to leave their families and communities in order to stand in their truth. You are welcome here. We see you. We hear you. We're listening. We unpack the cloth of compassion and light a candle for all men, women, and children who are victims of unthinkable crimes and for families desperate for resolution. You are welcome here. We, we see, see you. you. 
We hear you. We're listening. We unpack the cloth of hope and light a candle for those who will not be silenced, who will not be forced into the shadows. You are welcome here. We see you. We hear you. We're listening. We unpack the cloth of humility and light a candle for those whose image of God is not like yours, not like mine. Let us never be so arrogant as to think there is only one truth, one path. All are welcome. We see, we see you. you. We, we hear you. you. We're, We're listening. listening. I need to share an explanation for the song that I'm about to sing. It's a song that I've written within the last month, um, struggling with where we are with wars that are in our world in Ukraine um, when we're so far away, and what it is that we need to do, what we need to listen to. And in these stories that we've been listening to as Spirit Sisters, we had um, a, an Indigenous woman speak to us, and you know, part of the Indigenous world uh, view is listening to nature, listening to the land. Um, and on Sunday morning, um, Easter morning, when uh, Michelle was speaking about the messengers, and she was speaking about the women who were the messengers at the tomb, and I was sitting up in the bells, and I was watching the birds soar in that triangular part there. And this particular song is the impetus for it was a CBC News report when they were reporting on the bombing in Ukraine and that you could still hear birds sing. And we can hear birds sing here. So you can hear the birds sing through the bombs. So there are some disturbing parts to this song, but it, it ends in a hopeful place. So this is the birds know and the birds will be singing along too.
Thank you, Margaret. That was beautiful. Good morning. Oh, I don't need this. Good morning. And good morning to my people in Zoom land. I so wish I was there right now. <laughs> Actually, I'm happy to be here this morning. It's been a long time. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. According to organizational psychologist and author Adam Grant, we're getting much better at helping strangers and volunteering and giving to charity. The global statistics for 2021 show an increase of 25% in all three of these categories compared to pre-pandemic levels. The dominant response to suffering seems to be compassion. The worst of times brings out the best in us, and there have been many worst of times since the beginning of the pandemic. Let's take a step back for a moment to May of 2020. Rest assured, we won't stay there long. The whole world had shut down. We were locked in our homes and glued to the news. We started listening in some cases, obsessively. Do you remember? It was when the tech team first introduced and help, uh, helped us navigate Ring Central so we could stay connected to one another. During one of our first online services, we were asked to break into small virtual rooms, daunting to say the least, especially for the introverts among us. On this particular Sunday, we were asked to talk about the signs of God we had witnessed the week before. I was in a group of eight. The others had spoken and were waiting patiently for me to say something, anything. I have to admit, my first impulse was to sign out. Instead, I answered honestly that I hadn't noticed any signs of God in the week that was. It was the week following the very public killing of George Floyd. Spirit Sister Ticey Mitchell was in our group that day, and she called my name. She wanted to make sure I heard her words in our strange new cyber bubble. With the reassuring confidence she has accrued over her lifetime, she said God was standing with the women, the women who stood with arms linked between the police and the protesters. It was a lifeline. Ticey invited me to step away from the media onslaught and instead look to those standing at the heart of the heartache. It was what I needed to hear in that moment. And so I did. I looked to the women in the crowd for their wisdom and guidance, the mothers standing together in solidarity, weary from burying their children, repeating the names and demanding justice for black lives lost because black lives matter. And I realized, yes, God was there, standing at the heart of the heartache. God is always there standing at the heart of the heartache. I have the distinct honor of being surrounded and supported by a group of women here at Edith Rankin known as Spirit Sisters. I'm sure if you asked, anyone in our group would say the same thing. The description we use on the church website reads, Spirit Sisters is open to any woman who seeks to grow in faith, accompanied by a caring network of women and nurtured by the Spirit. We care deeply. We empathize sincerely. 
we listen intentionally and we are feeling overwhelmed with the news of the day and the news before that and the day before that and the day before that. It's a lot. Even as we acknowledge our privilege of being able to just get up and walk away, go outside, shut off all the gadgets that bring us all the news, binge on haagen and Netflix, it's a lot. Even as we help strangers and volunteer and give to charity 25% more than we did pre-pandemic, many of us are filled with such great sadness and it can be overwhelming. And we ask, where is God in this? As the world around us seems to be crumbling, how do we cope with the news of the day? Renew our spirit that we might show up for those standing at the heart of the heartache. Spirit Sister Marlene McCracken wrote, how does one cope with the news of the day when mandates and tragedies come our way? Do we sit and wish that they'd go away or put faith into action, donate and pray? Well, we do what we've always done. After we make our donations to support the various humanitarian causes and write our letters to our government officials and stand in peaceful protest and cry out, no more, no more, and pray, no more, no more. We resist the feeling of being overwhelmed by doing what we can in our small part of the world and we hold on to the hope that that small thing has a ripple effect. We Zoom with loved ones to check in. We send notes to friends in care facilities when we're not allowed to visit in person. <clears throat> we bake cookies and leave them on doorsteps. We add our prayers to the prayer shawls we knit and wrap them warmly around the shoulders of someone in need. We listen to the wisdom of our elders who've seen it all before. We listen to the wisdom of our young people who have the most at stake. We donate blood, we collect food, we gather in this sacred space and beyond this sacred space, knowing when two or more are gathered in God's name, God is there. We widen our circle, we invite more to the table, we commit to supporting those agencies working toward good and promoting peace. We stand in solidarity with our friends. We stand in solidarity with strangers, even when that means standing in our discomfort. We look for the Easter hallelujahs. We listen. In defiance of those who would destroy, we create. We create art pieces, like the one hanging below the cross today, designed by Michelle Down and made with such care by Joyce Payne. The beautiful swirling pattern filled with hope, like the phoenix rising from the ashes, reminding us to meet life's challenges and stand with our sisters and brothers who stand at the heart of the heartache with such courage and grace. Because we know God stands there too. God stands with the First Nations peoples who in the midst of unimaginable heartache and loss ask that we listen, listen to their story, listen to their truth, respect and honor and work toward reconciliation and restitution, support their search for their missing children, support their search for their missing and murdered indigenous women. God stands with the women of Afghanistan forced back into the shadows of society by the Taliban. God stands with organizations like Canadians for Women of Afghanistan, a group of women and men who are finding creative ways to support the women of Afghanistan by providing them with the tools they need to continue their education. God stands with the women who continue to tell their stories, the artists and writers, the doctors and teachers who refuse to be silenced, even as they know speaking up puts them in grave danger. God stands with the people of Ukraine and with the people welcoming Ukrainian refugees at the borders, holding signs and offering shelter. With the mothers who've left their strollers for refugee families to use, families who carry all of their worldly belongings in a single suitcase. Families who must pick up the pieces of their lives and figure out how to move forward. God shows up during the coldest night of the year walk 
and at Martha's Table, and at Lunch by George, and at Dawn House, and the United Way, and Partners in Mission Food Bank, and Lion Hearts, and Youth Diversion, and Bay Ridge Learning Center, and Almost Home, and Hospice Kingston. God stands at the heart of the heartache, and as the sons and daughters of God, the hands and feet of God, we are called to stand alongside on this holy ground, and to stay awake, and to be courageous, and strong, and let all that we do be done in love. But first, but first, we must listen. How do I cope with the news of the day, especially the seemingly senseless and utterly unconscionable ongoing conflicts in the world? How do I renew my battered spirit to keep on keeping on? Fortunately, I have kept Reverend Michelle's Christmas 2020 letter to us, where she suggests that COVID has given us all a gift, free for the taking, of simplicity, sanctuary, and a slower pace. I must have taken this gift to my heart without knowing it, for I have learned how to simplify meal prep and other household chores, how to declutter and beautify our little apartment so that it has become a special place for relaxing and for working on our writing projects. And I have discovered hope for wildlife a wonderful TV program about the rescue and rehabilitation of orphaned and injured animals in Nova Scotia, where it seems to me life moves at a slower pace. So now, as the world is changing once again, I cope with the news by rationing it. To one hour of TV watching per night, and one newspaper on the weekend. And my spirit is renewed by many things. Sometimes a walk in the park under lovely old trees, followed by a short nap. Sometimes a long, deep sleep filled with wonderful dreams. But it often happens when I just sit quietly close my eyes and breathe in and out, in and out, until I know once again that we are all connected, we are all loved, and there really is a future for all of us. How do I renew my spirit? It helps to get outside. On Easter Monday, after a long hiatus from walking during the cold winter months, I set out from our condo near Lake Ontario Park. As I walked, I saw and heard the repetitive lapping of the waves against the shoreline, something the view from our condo does not permit. I found this noise exciting. The park itself lends itself to much activity. Walkers, bicyclers, kids playing at the playground, families picnicking. There is a huge grassy spot past the hospital where four dogs were playing together, having such a good time, so joyful a sight. Opposite near the shore was a lovely dog just lying behind her owner, who explained to me that Molly, at 13, was overwhelmed by the other dog's boisterous behavior. 13 dog years is 74 in human years. Needless to say, I felt pretty good that my 76 years were allowing me to stride along at a reasonable pace. And though I do not suppose I could have frolicked with those dogs, I would have liked to try. My spirit was lifted. We see Canada geese and ducks and hawks fly by the condo window, and unfortunately pigeons attempting to nest on the balconies. In the park, I saw chickadees and red-winged blackbirds, probably feathering their nests or waiting for their new families to arrive. Crossing the path in front of me was a male mallard duck, so beautifully, so beautiful, and behind him his mate, heading onto the grassy area, 
unlike another pair in the water. These and so many other signs of spring renewed my spirit. As I watch the news, I feel a range of emotions, disbelief, sorrow, anger, and then fear as to what will be the final outcome. The war machines keep on rolling and leave death and destruction in their wake. And all this comes on the back of a global pandemic, which has been a struggle for the whole world. And I can't reconcile to any of this. I cannot help but wonder, where is God? Where is God in all this? And then I realize this horror and chaos is not from God. God did not create this. God is not absent. God is on the side of those who suffer. He hears their cries and he's in the midst of the suffering. If there ever was a time to count our blessings and name them, it is now. I find that doing this restores my spirit and refreshes my soul. My aim for all of humanity has always been that all the world should agree to put an end to war and pray grateful prayers for our precious planet, our beautiful world, and all that we have. It is finally time for the lion to lie down with the lamb and for us to live in peace. The anchor in front of our church is always there, just like hope. Hope is always there and we must keep hope alive. Never underestimate the power of hope. I believe that hope is like a spring garden. Never stop nurturing it for you never know what unexpected blossoms may sprout and bloom. How do I renew my spirit? I go for walks and I breathe deeply. I do yoga and I breathe deeply. I hug my grandsons and I breathe deeply. And then I almost always smile and laugh because they are so very cute and funny. I listen to music that soothes me and I read words that inspire and comfort me. I remember how important and life-affirming it is to practice gratitude. I try very hard to count my blessings and to look for the beauty and joy in life that is almost always available to us if we are open to it. But mostly, I try to focus on love. I believe that God is a force of love in the universe, a force that holds us tight and does not let us go. I remember the words from Corinthians that encourage me to be courageous and strong and to let all that I do be done in love. Not always easy to do, but I keep believing that if there is to be peace and love in the world, it begins in the hearts and minds of individuals. Individuals like you and me. We are all connected and it is believing in love and our connection to each other that renews my spirit. I have always felt that I was one of those persons who saw the glass half full rather than half empty. But after two years of isolation, I began to understand the folks who live with depression most of their lives. Almost daily, I would feel a downtime. So what could I do about it? Phoning another person who lived alone was a way of boosting my spirits, and hopefully theirs. Any time at the cottage out in the canoe was a bonus. And when confined to Kingston, to drive to Horsey Bay at the south end of Bay Ridge Drive worked as well. I begin the day by reciting the salutation of the dawn. It's from the Sufi. Listen to the exhortation of the dawn. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the verities and realities of your existence, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. 
for yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision, but today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Such is the salutation of the dawn. And singing in the evening, hymns as the sun sets, is another way for me to know that I am not alone. God is so good. Spirit is so strong. And yet we still need to stop and ask ourselves, our spirits, our sisters, how do we cope? when it seems that sometimes the world has gone to hell in a handbasket. For me, I light a candle and remember the light of the world. I breathe and remember the breath of life. I read the words of a poet and friend that remind me, precious are you holy and beloved. I swim deep in the cool and cleansing waters. I trust, I crave, I dance, I cry, I reach out, I reach in, I hold out, I hold on. I am vulnerable enough to be held in the safe arms of partner, grace, and trust. I am strong enough to be held in the safe arms of faith and mercy and the peace that passes all understanding. So tell me, how do you renew your spirit when all around you seems to be crumbling?
We continue to be blessed by the gifts of time, talent, and treasure that are offered here each and every week. Your love for this community and the wider church is evident in your generosity. There's always an offering plate at the back if you wish to give your gifts today, but we are honored by your commitment to using PAR, stopping by with a check, whatever works for you and your family. Praise be to God. Please join me in our musical response. Let us make room. Let us open our arms and invite others into an honest, spacious, glorious embrace. Let us carry each other. Let us give from what we have. Let us sleep to do the difficult things, the unexpected things, and the necessary things. Let us live for peace. Let us breathe hope. Let us create beauty. Let us rise to the questions of our time. Let us speak to the injustices in our world. Let us move the mountains of fear and intimidation. Let us shout down the walls that separate and divide. Let us fill the earth with the fragrance of love. Let us listen for those who have been silenced. Let us honor those who have been devalued. Let us say enough with abuse, abandonment, diminishing, and hiding. Let us not rest until every person is free and equal. Let us love in spite of fear. Let us love in spite of our stories. Let us love loudly, beautifully, divinely. Let us love. Will you please join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In places of celebration and joy, God is there. In places of hardship and longing, God is there. In places of peaceful acceptance and righteous indignation and fear and frustration and compassion and understanding, God is there in every hello and every goodbye. God is there. God stands at the heart of the heart center. God is and was and always will be there. As we walk along this road, may we help each other lighten the load. As we travel on our way, may we, may we listen to stories for understanding and may we strive to action that works for peace every day. 